Hey, it's Ella. Hey, on this Labor Day, I thought we'd bring you something fun and different. I don't know about you, but I've been noticing songs coming out now are really short. Well, we haven't imagined it. This is a real trend, and there are some surprising reasons behind it. So today on September 2nd on Post Reports, we're going to dig into this and bring you a conversation between Su Yu Chen, a graphics reporter at The Post, and our audio engineer, Sean Carter. I'm really excited for this conversation also because Sean has a background in music engineering, and he's produced a lot of his own music. Su Yu has done some fascinating reporting on music lengths. They started off talking about one of last year's hits, Kill Bill by SZA. This was a finalist for Song of the Year, and it was part of her Grammy-winning album. Okay, here's Sean and Sue Yu. Damn, I love that song. Sue Yu. Hey. I didn't realize that this song was like around two minutes and 30 seconds. I always thought it was, it was longer. I guess that means I was just playing it. I was just had it on loop back to back to back to back. I know, I love that too. And yeah, I before I checked the duration of the song, I didn't realize it's only less than three minutes. How how crazy is that? Right. So Sue Yu, what made you do a deep dive into this data about why songs are getting shorter? So I'm a big music fan. I listen to K-pop with my sister. And I remember last year hearing BTS, mm-hmm. one of the most popular K-pop groups, talking about you know the trend of songs getting shorter in the music industry for example their hit song butter released in 2021 was less than three minutes long and then there's japanese pop so my friends and i are both huge j-pop fans we're always excited to explore new music from our favorite artists And when Fuji Kaze released his new song, Hana, last year, we were both so thrilled because it has such a long intro. The song was about four minutes. And then I was like, wait a minute. Why am I so hyped about a song being like over three and a half minutes long? What's happening here? So... I felt like I had to do an analysis on this. Is this something new? Are songs getting shorter and shorter? And then, earlier this year, we had the Grammys. Man, this is it. We're back. It's the Grammys, baby. Welcome, everybody. Welcome. Welcome. To when the reporting world. on the Grammys, I just noticed this trend where, particularly in pop music, rap, and R&B genres, many of the songs now are getting shorter and shorter. And to be more precise, about like 28 of of the 144 nominated songs at the Grammys were under three minutes in length. Wow. Yes. Um, Besides the example, besides uh, Cezas Bill that we just listened to, Nicki Minaj and I Spice track Barbie World, which was nominated for Best Rap Song, also clock in at under, you know, it's not under three minutes, it's under two minutes. I feel like Ice Spice doesn't have a song longer than like <laughs> a minute and 45 seconds. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. no shade to Ice Spice. I love you, Ice Spice. I'm just, I'm just playing. Um, but yeah, that's so interesting. And Suyu, your, your reporting made me do a deep dive into like song duration and song links. And I love all music from all, all the decades. And you know, even going back to the 50s, songs were shorter. Elvis's Hound Dog was two minutes and 14 seconds. You ain't nothing but a hound dog. So, like, wasn't that, weren't songs short to begin with? Yes. So if we just stay in the 50s and 60s, there are a lot of examples of shorter songs. Like um, Maurice Williams and the Zodiacs had this big hit song called Stay which was about 1 minute and 40 seconds, so it was also under 2 minutes. Hey. <laughs> oh my god, that suits this topic so well, just a little bit longer. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, um, I'd say the primary reason back then 
if we're talking about technological limitation, mm -hmm. it would definitely be um, with the vinyl records. Mm -hmm. That was the main thing that people use to record music. A 45 RPM single can only hold about five minutes of music on one side. Okay. So that's one constraint. The second main factor that sort of shape how the song duration, the now familiar three to five minute song duration is the radio programming. Number one, the top tune of the week. The song your hit parade survey finds in first place. So radio normally shorten a song to about three and three and a half minutes because okay. they also had to accommodate for um, advertising. So if you're an artist and you want to be, you want your songs to be on the mainstream platform like a radio station, you definitely have to stick to those standards. Mm, that's so interesting. So, so what changed? Because in the 60s and the 70s, Songs started to get a little bit longer. Like, for instance, Bob Dylan's Like a Rolling Stone. It's like more than six minutes long. Uh, or uh, Hey Jude about the Beatles. Hey Jude, don't make it bad. Indeed, song gets longer. Starting from the mid 60s, we're seeing a few pop icons like Bob Dylan, um, like the Beatles, they started to experimenting with new song compositions and they had this commercial power mm -hmm. that really convinced the radio station to let them play these very long songs. Hey Ju was, I think, over seven minutes and like you said, Like a Rolling Stone was over six minutes. Mm -hmm. So it's like a meeting of technology, artistic expression, and then also radio programmers being pushed or pressured due to the success of these songs that allowed artists to create longer songs? Yeah. And people loved it. People bought the records. They sang along. Mm -hmm. um, and then moving on to the 80s, that was the beginning of the era where tapes and CD started showing up. Sony compact disc players. Your ears will tell you. It's not only what you play. It's what you play it on. Just listen to that. No hisses and crackles, of course. But if you do want that, munch a biscuit, sip a cup of cocoa, and it'll sound just like your old record. And these technologies didn't have the time limitations um, of vinyl. So they really allowed artists to do songs with more flexibility that make these artists want to experiment with new things. So we're seeing like how DVs are loved by the Bee Gees at over four minutes. And we're also seeing um, like silly love songs by Paul McCartney. Which is at nearly six minutes long. That's so interesting. It's like we went from vinyl to tapes, CDs, and then the jump ahead from CDs to like the 2000s where there's this gray area of the internet is, is rising, but not quite there yet. And people are still using CDs. So it's like this gray area. And I remember uh, like in the 2000s, I was working in Atlanta in a recording studio and I was sitting with engineers, producers, and, and artists and we're listening to this website called SoundCloud which is kind of like where all these underground musicians would play, start their music from electronic music to hip hop to, to anything. But primarily in Atlanta, it was like hip hop, R&B, and this fusion of electronic music that was happening with soul. And we were like, man, these songs are like a minute and 30, you know, a minute 30 or two minutes at the most. And, you know, the song structures were different. It was like a chorus at the very beginning. There was no intro. There was no drawn out kind of trail to lead the listener to it was just like boom here's the chorus here's the verse here's another chorus and the song was done and that started to seep into the mainstream a bit you would start hearing these sounds and these specific sound structures and intonation of vocals and the way that these underground artists were were structuring these vocals it's just like the internet was already making a strong impact in music without tiktok without Instagram. So a good example of this was The Weeknd. 
this is before the weekend is what he is now he was uh, an anonymous figure that just was releasing music on blogs in 2011 and he dropped this mixtape called house of balloons wow that was wild <laughs> <laughs> i remember back then i'm from taiwan and then mm. my college was in taiwan and a lot of my classmates, they dreamed of becoming a musician. Mm. And SoundCloud was the thing back then, but we also had this local digital platforms called Street Voice, where nice. people, like even like some of my classmates, they uploaded um, their, their songs to this digital platforms. And I really enjoy listening to those newer, uh, younger, you know, budding artists. Mm -hmm. And I also remember listening to songs that are like, they were like less than two minutes, but I found mm -hmm. them so interesting. And I realized the song structure could be, could be so different than the standard song back at those times. So one example that I think of was Look for a Star by Accuse 5. And the song was released in November 2017. It's about 2 minutes and 22 seconds. And Accuse 5 became a very popular band in Taiwan in the past few years. That's awesome. It's like, it seemed like the internet was already making its position within music. Internet music has its own unique lane that, that wasn't there before. After the break, Sean and Suyu get into how musicians feel about this shift in pop music and what might be coming next. We'll be right back. So I'm curious, have you spoken to any musicians today that talked to you about these changes and how we got to songs being so short? Yeah, I spoke with Erica Nuri Taylor. She's a songwriter and she was nominated for 2008 Grammy for a song called When I See You. The song was more than three minutes long and it was recorded by Fantasia Barino. Erica Neary Taylor highlighted the general shortening of attention spans and how this has impacted music. Mm -hmm. People, you know, are interested for two minutes and then they want to switch to the next song, mm -hmm. the next video, the next TikTok. It's constant, constant scrolling and bouncing around. And so I think, you know, that has also changed a lot uh, with streaming music. For example, Nuri Taylor brought up um, Leo Yadi's Poland, which was just 83 seconds. But it has achieved massive popularity and inspired numerous TikTok creations. She specifically mentioned about how the paper play model adopted by most of the streaming platforms really affected how writers nowadays are creating songs. Let's take Spotify as an example. Mm -hmm. If you're a writer, if you're an artist, um, you only get royalties when a song is played for at least 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. So what that means for an artist is that in order to really, you know, draw people's attention and make them stay for a longer time, you'll have to give them the good stuff, the catchy hooks quicker. So I think that also lead to many of the newer songs now skipping intros, like what Nuri Taylor mentioned in our conversation. She was like, and many of the songs now also omit bridges. Especially the pop songs, especially the hit songs that are on the radio, which is really disappointing for me because a bridge in a song is so special. Mm. Um, it's one of my favorite parts of writing, of, of writing a song is writing the bridge mm. um and also too i think for musicians i think it's you know fun as well because you get to change chords and 
change the melody and there's so much that you can do that a lot of musicians are just not doing anymore that's so interesting it's like almost teetering the line of artistic success and commercial success especially when we're talking about losing the bridges like i love hearing bridges and the song structure it goes like this there will be a verse then a pre-chorus and then a chorus and then a verse and then a pre-chorus and then a bridge and then the chorus and then a chorus so that bridge usually only comes once twice if you're lucky and and it's like a total chord change or sometimes it would be a key change something that is very different uh, in, in relation to the verses and the chorus and, and with that said one of my favorite bridges uh i was watching the super bowl as we all were and Usher's song, You Don't Have to Call, has one of my favorite bridges. So tonight, I'm gonna do it yeah, I love that bridge. It's one of my favorite bridges ever. And then it goes back into the chorus. You're right, I, I barely hear bridges anymore in new songs. Yeah, and I remember when I spoke with Neri Taylor, she was like, I hope that songs don't get any shorter than they already are. Okay, so you so now that we've we've went from vinyl records to tape, cassettes to CDs to SoundCloud to the internet and to street voice and TikTok, where do you see the future of music going in terms of length and time? I am quite optimistic, actually. I think, yes, we are seeing many shorter songs in the mainstream realm. Yes, in the past, mainstream media and the top 40 charts heavily influenced how mainstream music should be. However, with the advent of the internet and digital platform, we're also witnessing a shift towards, I think, a more fragmented and more diverse music scene where popular niches are gaining momentum and sometimes even rivaling mainstream popularity. Like myself, I listen to a lot of like smaller bands um, in Taiwan, like right before they, you know, gain popularity in the mainstream media. And there's a lot of variance in their songs in terms of, you know, the composition, the structure, which I found really engaging. Well, Suyu, thank you for your time. And I hope uh, hope the bands that you love release longer songs so you can jam out to them for longer. Yeah, thank you for having me. That was our Post Reports engineer, Sean Carter. In conversation with Su Yu Chen, a graphics reporter for The Post. Su Yu has a bunch of really fun visual pieces that analyze changes in song length. She even has one specifically about Taylor Swift's catalog. You can check out our work on WashingtonPost.com, and we'll also have links to those pieces in our show notes. That's it for Post Reports. Thanks for listening. Today's show was produced by Alana Gordon. It was edited by Monica Campbell and mixed by Rennie Svernovsky. I'm Elahe Izadi. We'll be back tomorrow with more stories from The Washington Post.